What's going on, everybody? All glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the author and finisher of our faith, and without him, nothing is possible. Welcome to Facing Gates Ministries. Click that subscribe button. Click on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Also, guys, let's get the likes up, 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 up. Okay. This helps get truth out there to the public. Okay. Now, let's get right to it. Demons, do they know the future? Now, before I answer that question, and before I introduce uh, the character for this video's example, we're going to go to John chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. Okay. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, Christ often referred to the spirit realm through agriculture, uh, through, through fruits, through harvest, reaping and sowing season, okay? Uh, the, the fruit of a person, okay? The fruit of their works. And he also refers to the spirit realm as if it's a house, okay? What else did he say when it, when an evil spirit is cast out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I'll go back to the house which I was cast out of. And the last state of that man is worse than the beginning. You see that? So evil spirits can come and dwell within your spiritual house. Okay, Christ also said he knocks on the door of our heart. So that's telling you that this, we, this flesh is just an outward shell. Okay, it goes back to the ground and you'll never, ever, ever see it again. Okay, the spirit, your spirit and your soul is the real you. Okay. In the Old Testament, they physically set up an altar, a tabernacle, so the Most High could come and dwell amongst the children of Israel, in particular, the priesthood, Aaron and Moses, because they were the only ones who were allowed inside the tabernacle. Okay, but in the New Testament, the tabernacle, the altars are upon our heart. You understand. So whatever we do, like verse one says, he who climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Meaning if you are not reading the scriptures, praying to the most high and waiting with patience, because he did promise he will show us things to come. Okay, but but Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You see that? So there are those who the enemy attracts these spirits to these human beings because the devil can only work through the flesh. He, he's not lawful in this realm. So he can only work through human beings to summons those spirits. Okay. You don't read here that Christ say lighting candles or spreading incense or any of these things. 
those things do not get out spirits. Okay, it's the word of God. Man physically sells incense and all of the all of these candles and things like that. Okay, nothing in the physical realm is going to dictate to that spirit realm. You have to have a source, and the source we are supposed to use, according to John 10, verse 1 through 3, is the word of God. Because by the, by the word of God, the earth and its foundations was framed, okay, by the words of his mouth. That's the reason why we use his word. You understand? So, now that I done laid that framework, okay, now I'm going to get to this question, then I'm going to introduce this character. Do demons know the future? No, they do not. Not really. The way demons operate is through monitoring spirits. Okay. A monitoring spirit is a spirit that dwells, if they're not cast out, that dwells amongst human beings. And we can't see them because God put up a veil that, that we cannot see that spirit realm except through pr praying and fasting or unless you climb up some other way, like John chapter 10 stated. Okay. So demons rely on monitoring spirits to be summoned by individuals, human beings who have a desire for power, for prestige, or money, or or both. Okay. That's what the because the devil has to offer a deal. Okay. And as I've stated before, he does not get screwed on the deals he make with men. Okay. And that's the perfect segue into meeting our character here based off of a true story. There are real life examples of people like this. Okay. Meet soothsayer Samuel the sorcerer. Okay. Now, Samuel the soothsayer. This sorcerer has been in business for 15 years. He earns $250,000 per year. Now, Samuel is deep into witchcraft. Okay. He's never met this demon who's the true source behind everything that Samuel does. All of the futures that he's read, all of the palms he's read, all of the curses he's put on people in exchange for a large sum of money. Okay. This demon whom Samuel has never met, he, he only listens to that voice that tells him what, what goes on in people's lives. And he also provides him the power to cast spells on people. You understand? So, considering everything that goes on with this guy, Samuel the Sorcerer, what he does not know, and this is very important, is that once he dies, this demon owns the right to his soul. Okay. This demon here. Now, guys, I'm not the best artist. 
I drew the I drew these pictures myself. I'm better at drawing human faces and characters than I am drawing houses and things like that. You'll see that in my other video. Okay, but I did the best that I could. Okay, just to give you an idea, again, this is a depiction of what going, there are people who do things like this and think this is what the scriptures talk about. God gave them over to strong delusion that they might believe a lie. Now, keep in mind, this is God giving them over to strong delusion. So you know the strength of this delusion to think that you're just going to continue to make your money, 250000 a year, and you're dealing with these spirits, these evil entities, again, who will be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. Think about that. Think about it. These spirits have no motive to be in partnership with men. Okay. And the, the problem most people make is number one, thinking that the devil, the devil tricks them into believing that he doesn't even exist. Okay. Number two, the devil does a really, really good job at getting people to believe in the strong delusion, offering deals to get men comfortable into thinking that righteousness is that unrighteousness is righteousness, that good is evil. That evil is good. Excuse me. Yeah, this is the devil is really, really good at what he does. And he, he gets men in, to lowering his guard down, not understanding that this devil's been around for at least the last 6,000 years. He's seen billions upon billions of men perish and go to the lake of fire. Okay. Or go to hell, which is a holding place before death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. You understand? But ultimately, they go to the lake of fire. Okay, those who do the will of these demons. You understand? And this, this is the biggest thing that people think that the devil's just... So he, he does a good job of making uh, caricatures in, in these cartoons depicting him in a friendly, non-threatening way, not understanding that this is a supernatural assassin, okay, does not care about men one bit, you understand? So we're going to come back to this situation. We're going to go to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1 through 5. Okay. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, verse 2, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. You see that? Word of mouth. There's no nothing physical there. No lighting candles, no spreading incense, none of that. Just confess that Jesus starts there confession. We talk about repentance as well. Verse 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, period. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. 
verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, when it talks about confesses that Jesus Christ, that's not just saying confess out of your mouth, but Christ is the word. <laughs> As John chapter 1 states, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. So anything that you, you're doing, you want to inquire to God about something, he may not let you know right away. Why? Because he's giving you your word. And in his infinite wisdom, knowing that man is lazy, that's why the Bible is so thick <laughs> and there's so much word. So that you want an answer, you have to go in his word for a lot of things and find it. Now, the Holy Spirit did promise to show us things to come. Okay, but we have to be patient in waiting on him. Not going out experimenting with these spirits. You understand? Because if we go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Oh, excuse me. Matthew 7. Verse 22. He says, Christ talking here, says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now. He's not saying, denying that they didn't prophesy in his name, as many will come in his name. You see that? But why is it that Christ still denies them from entering the kingdom? You see, the thing you have to understand, this character here, Simon, uh, Samuel, the soothsaying sorcerer, can go walk up to people and tell them in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ says that you're going to make $100,000 a year within the next five months or whatever, even though he's operating by a familiar spirit. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't matter that he told them the truth. Oh, God, y'all got to get this. It does not matter. The, the, Satan told Eve in the garden partial truth. He did this what he doesn't tell them. You see, he told, he's telling them partial truth. Or he can be telling them the entire truth of just about that situation, but not giving them the source of the information. Oh. Did you do you guys know that demons demons have the power to use men to raise people from the dead? Do you know that? Demons have the power to use men to to raise people from the dead, to heal people, to do they have that power. That they can do. But it's the spirit, that's why the scriptures say, try the spirits and see that they are of God. You understand? Because Exodus twenty two eighteen, God said, I suffered a witch not to live. A witch was stoned to death in the Old Testament. That's why the witch who, uh, the medium who was dealing with King Saul, was so afraid when she found out that it was King Saul. She just didn't know that the Lord had departed from him when she first met him. But it was the king, the king was supposed to work with the priest or the prophet to put 
that was the law of the land to put them to death. So we know there's a New Testament version of this because the Old Testament, again, is a shadow of the New Testament. So we go to Acts chapter 13, verse 10. Now, this is uh, Saul, who would become the Apostle Paul. The Holy Spirit filled him in verse 9, and talking to this sorcerer who was, who was able to work uh, sorcery. Okay. The man, the scriptures say this man in verse 7 was called Barnab uh, Barnabas. And Saul sought to hear the word Barnabas and Saul, the prophet, uh, apostle Barnabas, and the apostle Paul, who was then named Saul, sought to hear the word of God. You see that? <laughs> they sought to hear. When you seek something, you're they're able to wait there patiently. You understand? But this sorcerer, verse 6, if you had gone to the island, to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, who was a Jew named Bar-Jesus. And he was he had his counsel, verse 7, and Barnabas and Saul sought to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, withstood them seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Verse 9, Then Saul, who was called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, Oh, full of all deceit and fraud. You see that? Because they climbed up another way instead of waiting to hear the word of God, that they're fraud. You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? And now indeed the hand of the Lord of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. You see that? So, the eternal fate, okay, this, because really what they do is they set up an evil altar. Now, that's a candle there. And I just quickly did a sketch there. They're, they're really, they use things to bring to the evil or somebody's picture or some listen this is of the devil and it's punishable by the lake of fire you have people doing this against you you pray against that spirit okay because again that spirit comes to use man to afflict and persecute the church Okay, and those who are willing to do the will of Christ, those who do the will of Christ, you understand that there's a demon behind that. Okay, there's a demon behind that. 